Hello friends. Well, today we are wrapping up our study of the letter to the Hebrews with a brief review, video number 20 of Hebrews chapter 13, verses 17 through 25. What a wonderful study we've been involved in. And again, I want to thank you for your participation, for your hard work, for your contributions to this particular online study. We've all appreciated your participation. Now, what we have in this text are a few further exhortations and some concluding words. Let's take a look, first of all, at the author's appeal in verse 17. Here, our author is encouraging his readers to trust the direction of their present leadership, isn't he? The command of this verse is to obey your leaders and submit to those leaders. The author, of course, is not suggesting a rubber stamp endorsement of the views of all leaders, no. He is dealing with a particular historical situation, and in this he is equating the faith of the leaders whom he knows with the original apostolic faith. I think that's an important consideration here. He knows these leaders, and he knows that what they teach and what they practice accords with apostolic teaching and apostolic practice. And so he can say to his readers, you need to obey them. You need to follow their lead. The author feels that submission to the leaders is reasonable. Why? Because they bear the solemn responsibility of watching over the souls of men and women in their charge. As carefully as shepherds pass sleepless nights, these leaders watch over the flock, knowing that one day they must give an account to the chief shepherd. Then he adds, let them do this with joy and not with sighing, for that would be harmful to you. The congregation should be willing to put forth every effort to cooperate with its acknowledged leaders. It should seek to lessen the pain of leadership, not to add to it. This exhortation to follow their leaders is followed by the exhortation to pray for the author. That's verse 18. And the author wants his readers to pray for him so that he might be restored to them soon. Apparently, he had lived among them formerly and now, separated from them, wants to return to them. And he believes their prayers will be effective to that end. And then, as the author asked his readers to pray for him, he prays for them in verses 20 and 21. This is a wonderful prayer. A wonderful doxology, too. The author mentions the God of peace who raised Jesus from the dead. This describes not only God's nature, but also God's power. And by that same power, the author is asking that the readers be equipped with everything necessary to do God's will. It is God who supplies the grace that enables us to do his will. But again, his request is simple and plain, that they may do the will of God. And that is a wonderful request that we can make of God too, isn't it? That he will supply us with everything we need to do his will. Then in verse 22, the author makes it plain that he is hoping for a kind reception to his brief word of exhortation. This letter has been a word of exhortation. We might, we might not consider it so brief, but he did. He has urged in this letter and encouraged in this letter his readers to hang on to Christ and to not quit the Christian religion. He knows full well that some have been resentful of his efforts, but he is sure that he has written briefly, especially in view of this critical situation of his readers and the weighty subjects that he has had to handle. Then there is the mention that Timothy is soon to be released. Perhaps he had been in prison, although the circumstances of his imprisonment are unknown. And then follows the farewell greeting, which was customary in the first century world. The writer says, Greet all your leaders, and grace be with all of you. So, the author concludes his letter by extending God's grace to them. He has declared the fundamental truths of the Christian religion, and he has grappled with the minds of men and women, slow to believe, those who mentally and spiritually were adrift at sea, as it were. In chapter 13, he has given his final exhortations and appeal. 
He wants them to hold on to Christ at all costs. They are to remember the lives of those who first spoke the word of God to them. They are not to be carried away by strange teachings. They are to continue to hold on to Christ and be loyal to him. And that concludes our study of this wonderful letter. I hope our time together in this book of the Word of God has strengthened your faith in God. I hope it has encouraged you to hold on to Christ at all costs. Again, it's been a wonderful study together and I want to thank you once again for your daily participation in it. Your participation, your engagement has meant a lot to me personally and to all of us who have benefited by hearing your thoughts. I want you to know that we are planning to begin another three-column online community Bible study on January the 19th, 2020. That's about four weeks away, five weeks away. We'll take a little break for the holidays and, and then uh, gear up to uh, start a new Bible study on January the 19th. And our study, beginning January 19th, will be through the book of Luke. We will be sending more information as the time approaches. In the meantime, enjoy your holidays with your loved ones, and may God bless you as you enter another new year.